Hello everyone, it's Maha. Thank you again for joining me. I've decided to do a part two of my video called What's in Ascent, where I did a whole bunch of unboxing of my essential oils, the yearly essential oil haul that I do. And you know what? I actually realized I had forgotten to get a couple of the oils. So I had to make a second order and I added a few more oils in there that I wouldn't have normally actually purchased until next year. But I thought, what the heck, they had a sale happening and they had free shipping. So I just went and ordered more than the two oils that I actually needed. I knew that would happen. And then after I filmed the last video, I also realized that I had so many things to talk about that I left out. And this always happens. Every time I, I make a video, I always come up with things I should have said or that I forgot to say. And in this case, though, I do want to share um, some information about the oils. So I'm going to go back to a couple of the oils that I showed in the last video and just talk a little bit more about them. And then a few people, or well, two people asked me some questions that I'm going to touch up on in this video as well. I'm going to uh, answer one of them in the beginning and one of them in the end. So I've also taken notes so I don't forget the things I want to say. I'm so excited, you guys. There's so much to talk about. Okay, so let's start. Here's a little package that I got in the mail the other day. There are a few oils that I'm going to share with you. One of them is my surprise oil, like I did last time. I have a flower oil that I've never smelt before, and I'm super exci excited because I think it's going to smell so, so, so heavenly. So I'll do that at the end. So. Okay, so let's go ahead with the, the actually I'm going to talk about some of the, the stuff that I forgot to say in the last video. I forgot to show you that I had also purchased a blue lotus oil. It's actually called lotus butter and this is sort of solid. It's this color, this kind of like brownie color. It was advertised as lotus butter and I forgot to call them, I will call them and ask exactly what the ingredients are but if I'm not mistaken I'm not 100% sure I have to double check but what I think this is is actually the fatty substance that is the byproduct of uh, the absolute so when they make the blue lotus absolute it goes through the solvent extraction process and you end up with this fatty substance before the absolute so I think this is what this is. I think it's a pure lotus oil, but it's not the absolute. So it's not blue, it's not liquid, and it was a little bit cheaper, which is why I got it, because the blue lotus essential oil for five milliliter was around $170, and that was way too much. So I just got this. I got this for around $40, and it lasts a long time. I've been using it almost every day, and it's not even, it's not even like a, quarter finished. So how I use this, oh it smells so strong I can smell it from far away. I just rub my finger gently on it. I use it for meditation and I kind of rub like this on my third eye and I'm going to talk to you about this actually something really amazing happened. So uh, I use it for meditation and you know I have to say I'm not in love with its scent it's a very peculiar and very particular scent. I don't know how to describe it. I'm not even going to try because I'm not the best. I probably won't sound like it at all. I would say peppermintish kind of. Uh, it's just really, it's very different. Those of you who have blue lotus know what I mean. But I do love it. What I love about it, not exactly uh, the way it smells, but how it makes me feel. I feel so relaxed and calm. like almost immediately when I put this on I get into that kind of meditative state and what I wanted to tell you something really amazing happened and it kind of made me realize the potentials to aromatherapy I usually use this in the evenings when I do my meditation or late afternoon and then one morning though I was just putting on some oil in the mornings, I like to put on some olive oil on my skin, 
I also have something, uh, it's a carrier oil called Camelina oil. It's from a flower. It's not very, it's not very commercialized yet. It's apparently it's very expensive. I get it from a good friend of ours who, uh, who run some fisheries and they feed the fish with this oil, Camelina oil. Apparently it's, it's very healthy for the fish and it has a lot of omegas in it very nutritious so it's actually really good for skin too very similar to primrose oil in a lot of ways uh, so I use that on my skin it doesn't actually have any it does have a slight scent of like fresh grass or something so I put that on but something really amazing happened one morning I was just sitting and rubbing it on my face and I did this exact same motion that I do with this lotus oil so I went like this and then I went like that and then honestly it was so weird because I started to actually smell the lotus oil the blue lotus oil I actually started to smell it even though I wasn't even wearing it isn't that amazing I mean I was really shocked I thought that's so cool because if this motion it's make that's making me smell the oil this means that I could program myself through different movements to teach myself different things you know and uh, for example, I could like program my, myself or I don't know, some changes that you want to make or, uh, you know, you name it. It's just that all of a sudden things started opening up to me as to how much potential there is to aromatherapy that we have still yet to discover. And this reminds me of a book, if you haven't read it yet, it's an amazing book by Scott Cunningham called Magical Aromatherapy. And I think that's the best book that I've found and pretty much the only one that really gets into that whole uh, visual, um, allowing for changes to happen in your life using visualizations, meditations, and uh, essential oils at the same time. Really great book, highly recommended. So yeah, I was thinking, wow, it made me think of uh, this program I was watching once on TV where this man who was blind, uh, he apparently suddenly got blind in adulthood and uh, they were doing a lot of researches on him because uh, he discovered a way where by creating this clicking noises, like clicking sounds with his mouth, like just this clicking sounds, he could see. So using sound, he could create visual images in his head. So they, it was amazing, you guys. They put him into these spaces where like with all these uh, structural um, pillars and um, like architectural designs, he would go with a stick and do all this clicking sounds and sit down a few minutes later and start sketching it all out. And they checked that it was exactly accurate to, to the like to the spot of the whole structure that he walked through. He created, he knew what they looked like, everything in detail, just by making this clicking sounds. Isn't that amazing? So they're doing all these, um, I think, I don't know which university in the States it is, but they're doing studies on him to uh, discover all the potentials that the sense of sound can give us. Anyway, that's a little off topic, but it just amazes me how much we don't already know. And I think if you are someone who wants to, you know, create change in your life, work with any kind of healing, uh, modalities, it's good to explore aromas and approach them in some way. I've even started having dreams now where I could smell certain oils and I never used to get that before and I'll just quickly tell you this. This is a little bit of a rambling by the way. This is going to be a rambling slash talking about essential oils. So if you like that stuff, stick around. It'll, it's going to be fun. So I'll just quickly tell you about this dream. I had a dream where I was, uh, I was in this place anyway, and there's this guy that I know, and I don't have any feelings for this this particular person, but apparently in my dream I did. So I wanted to attract his attention, and I took my Lang Lang oil and I put it on, like a drop on each of my wrists, and I rubbed them together, and I smelt it, and I could smell Lang Lang. I could just smell it, and it was so beautiful, and I was thinking, hmm. What can I make to attract this guy's attention? What kind of blend can I create to attract his attention? And I thought, jasmine, ginger, and lang lang. And that was my dream. When I woke up, I was thinking, That's how, how perfect is that? Because I've been thinking about ginger essential oil. I love 
the smell of ginger, by the way, just like fresh ginger. I love it so much, but I don't have the essential oil of it. For the same reason as I was explaining for um, cinnamon in my previous video, I just, I'm afraid that I'd be too strong and it might irritate my skin, but it is an oil that I'm definitely going to mm, get someday. So uh, that, I think that night where I had that dream, that same night I was wondering what would ginger smell good with? What would I blend it with? And then I had that dream. And it was just per perfect because I really think that I know Lang Lang and Jasmine are amazing together. And I think ginger would just add that kick t to that. Uh, if any of you have ginger essential oil or have tried it, let me know what you think. Um, I know that it's really good for massage blends. It's good for pain. But I also know that it is a skin irritant and I have kind of sensitive skin. So let's get to the oils. Okay, so Blue Lotus. Absolutely love it for meditation. It's really amazing. Um, and I wanted to just bring up, right, right. So I was talking about gardenia in my last oil, and I kind of did a opening of it and smelt it with you. But I was so excited that I didn't actually really talk about what it smelled like. So after uh, using it a few different days, I can tell you that it is such an amazing it's an amazing flower. The scent is highly complex and it's, by, what I mean by that is that when you first put it on, at least for me, it smelled like blossoms, like fresh blossoms or flowers. And then at first it kind of smelled like flowers and then it changed slightly to this kind of strawberry bubblegum-ish scent, like a little fruity, but like a strawberry fruity as opposed to citrus fruity. And it kind of lingered on for a long time, that, that, that fruity scent. It's a very complex scent, although I have to say that with the flower oils, in my experience, I personally like them better when they're blended with other oils. Now I should say here that when I say flower oils, they're actually absolutes. They're not essential oils. And I've talked about this in another one of my videos before. Uh, the only difference, just quickly to recap the only difference between an absolute and an essential oil is that the process of extraction uh, of the essential oil is by steam distillation and the absolutes are solvent extraction so it's a it's a more absolutes are the solvent extraction process takes longer therefore it's more expensive and absolutes are highly therapeutic except they're usually used for perfumery because they give you a very pure smell since the smell of the absolutes is very very pure so that's why they use absolutes in perfumery and they're usually flowers almost always so the my um the gr gardenia that i showed you last time i actually realized that what i didn't mention is that it's uh so it, even though the bottle is one, a five milliliter bottle, it's actually, the, the one I bought is one milliliter in a five milliliter jar. It was only one milliliter of the absolute blended with jojoba oil, I guess, because it was too costly to have the whole thing, like a, get a five milliliter gardenia was way too much. I think it was around $200. So I got one milliliter um, diluted. But it was still really strong. I mean, I still use two drops of it in a, a 15 milliliter uh, little thing when I put it on, and it's, it's way enough. It's more than enough. So the gardenia has a very complex scent, and I love blending it with did I, Melissa. I love blending it with lavender. I love blending it with sandalwood. Sandalwood and gardenia amazing combination. It's really good for meditation and they're both uh, linked to the moon. I used that for a full moon ritual that I did and what I did also, and this is one thing I love to do, is I love charging my crystals with my oils. So very simple, I just, when I'm put, rubbing it on my hand, I just will hold my crystal in hand and kind of infuse the crystal with the oil. and. I discovered that my green moonstone crystal, which I forgot to bring it here to show you, uh, I, will, I will insert a photo of it for you because it's such a beautiful crystal. I just recently discovered how much I love it. It's so nurturing to me. It's um, when I'm feeling like my emotions are just really up and down, I just 
hold that crystal to my heart and it really calms me down. I feel like it really calms my mood and uh, doesn't get rid of them but it makes me kind of be in touch with them more and sail my way through it thinking it's okay, it's okay. I am calm even though my emotions are totally stormy right now. So the green moonstone is great for that and I love, love, love charging it with sandalwood and gardenia. It was amazing. And I have to say that up until that point, I hadn't really used my green moonstone before. When I buy crystals, I don't know how you do it, but I just buy crystals that I'm attracted to as opposed to reading about them and then buying them. I used to read about them uh, and then buy them uh, in the beginning when I wasn't really used to working with crystals very much, but now I do it more intuitively. So I'll be attracted to a crystal, I'll get it, I'll cleanse it, I'll put it on my altar, I'll hang around it, you know, I'll let it hang around me wherever I am, and then whenever I feel called to um, to use it, I grab it and I use it, and then it tells me what it's what it's for, for me. So and then I'll I might go and research and learn a little bit about it. So the green moonstone that night when I blended the gardenia and sandalwood, and I had and it was a full moon I think, and I wanted to do a meditation. It was like, take me with you. I want to go. To, with you to your meditation right now. So I had to do it and then it was just so calming and um, relaxing for my emotions. Okay, so let's see. Gardenia I wanted to talk about. I want to go, oh yeah, so the rose oil that I showed you last time, which is this one milliliter it was uh, in here. I dumped it in a 125 milliliter jar. I was telling you about this last time, but I thought I'd show you what it looks like. So this is how big it is. And I, if I use this every day, it lasts me for three months. And I will just use it for my hands and face, not the entire body, because it's too costly for that. It is amazing, though. I talked about Rose Auto. This is Rose Auto, by the way, Damask, Rose Damascena. Amazing. It's amazing for calming down your nerves, calming down the nervous system. And um, I've talked about it in great detail, how it's really good for hormone balancing. Um, the other day, I put on some of this, and I was thinking, honestly, this is my last resort. If nothing else works, I'll come back to my Rose Auto, because Rose Auto is just so healing. It's like putting it on my hands and my face is like, seriously, it's like having gone through a full-on, a two-hour session of really good talk therapy hands down it's like exactly it's even better I mean it's just it's so worth the investment it, if I had to just pick one oil that I would if I had to live with it all my life and have no other oils around it would be the rose auto because I find it very mm, it's used for a variety of different things I find it very nurturing very healing really good for me because I tend to be kind of a nervous person person. I have more of an anxious personality. I always want to, you know, do things and my mind is highly active so it calms me down. It's really good for meditation and I love charging my crystals with this. All of them. It's kind of like, I think the Rose Auto has just such a pure, pure loving, pure fourth, fourth chakra energy. It's so clearing and cleansing but at the same time very loving and I, I, I charge all my crystals with this. Definitely the pink and the green ones. All the pink and the green ones are perfect with this, but even the other ones. I, uh, when I talked about amethyst, I told you guys I love to charge my amethyst with frankincense. Frankincense is a really good one too. I feel like frankincense and rose are kind of my the two oils that I love to charge my crystals with, I love to meditate with. So that's that. And then I make this cream that I've showed you before. This is a little plastic jar. I don't really like to use plastic, but this is the only plastic jar that I had this size. It's 30 ml. I just put, uh, there's cream inside, there's lotion. This lotion is one that I buy that's um, unscented. It's jojoba, grapeseed, and coconut oil. Coconut oil is really great for all skin types, especially if you have, if you tend to have breakouts, coconut oil is really great. So I, um, I use, uh, what do I use? I use Lang Lang, Rose, Geranium, no, Geranium, Rose, and Lang Lang, those three. Not Rose, Geranium, but Geranium, Rose, 
Rose Auto, and Lang Lang. I use those three together in this lotion mix. And I use that almost every day for my skin. Well, I alternate. Two weeks I might do this, and then two weeks some other combination. But this is my favorite combination because it's... Mm, I talked about how geranium is uh, hormone balancing. So is Rose. And the oils that tend to be... I've said this before, I think, uh, balancing for the hormones, they are generally good for skin as well. Uh, so the geranium and rose auto combination is really great. I got, I showed you another oil I bought from the same company called Roses Over Geranium. It's apparently roses and geranium. I don't smell the rose very much though, but I use that and I use rose and Lang Lang. Lang Lang is really great for balancing and normalizing the skin. So whether you have a skin that's too dry or too oily, Lang Lang is great. It just normalizes the skin. I mean, I have combination skin. I use Lang Lang. It's really great for that. Uh, so if you have one of those two extremes, Lang Lang is one that I recommend for you to balance your skin, um, normalize it. And uh, if you have oily skin, hazelnut, uh, hazelnut carrier oil it would be a really good one to use as a base. Jojoba is great because it has that waxy substance called sebum, I think it's pronounced S-E-B-U-M, and that is uh, naturally our skin has that, so it helps to balance that even more, and it gives you a really beautiful skin. By the way, I should have probably said in the intro to this video, this is a very informal video where I'm just blabbing about essential oils, and uh, a lot of it is about aromatherapy, so not essential oils that are not really, it's not meant to be for magical purposes, although I love using essential oils for that as well, but I'm really interested in aromatherapy, and um, okay, now I'm going to talk about the books. As you can see, this, this video has no order, so I hope you're okay with that. Um, I wanted to say this one question I had um, was about books. Someone asked, well actually many people ask me from time to time, which books I recommend for aromatherapy. So I'm going to answer this one question now. I have read many really, really great books, and there are so many out there that are really, really great. However, if I had to pick just three, I will tell you right off the bat, the first, the very first one is my favorite called uh, Astrological Aromatherapy by Patricia Davis. And I'm going to put all the links of these books down below, just so you know. Uh, Astrological Aromatherapy. The first time I saw that book was five or six years ago, and when I saw the title, I thought, this is a weird but very cool book at the same time, so I'm going to read it. And I read it, and I just fell in love with um, the way the book describes both astrology and essential oils in aromatherapy. That's actually the book that got me into seriously thinking of studying astrology as to become a professional astrologist. That was the book. First of all, Patricia Davis is such an amazing author. She writes beautifully. She writes clearly to the point. She explains everything so well. Uh, that book is a beautiful book. I have that on Kindle, so I can't show it to you. I have most of these books on Kindle, actually. Actually, all of them that I'm going to mention. Uh, so she talks, she gives you a section on astrology very beginner very very basic so you don't have to know anything about astrology to read this book nor do you have to know anything about um, aromatherapy so she gives you a basic uh, introduction to astrology she takes you through all the signs and all the planets very interesting she talks about the mythology of the planets and um, at the beginning she gives you a signature oil for every sign and she explains why and then she gives you other oils related to that sign and then the planet that rules that sign so you'll get a really good idea of astrology as well in that section and then she has another section only on aromatherapy so just the basics of aromatherapy how they work very briefly blending she teaches you how to blend she talks about blending so if you're someone who's interested in blending, this is a great book because you get an idea. If you're interested in blending and uh, the magical or let's say the correspondences between planets and plants, this is a really great book. It's beautifully written. 
my top top I've talked about this book before as well and then another book is called awakening to the healing fragrance awakening to healing fragrance awakening to yes by Elizabeth Ann Jones and what I love about this book getting thirsty is how um, she talks about uh, there the, in the first part there are 11 chapters where she talks about a, a very influential and powerful woman in history for example she talks about Cleopatra Esther the Persian queen who saved the Jews um, the woman in Jesus's life like Mary Magdalene she talks about their life and how they used essential oils so it's so poetic it's it's kind of like a romantic image of you going back in history and seeing how these women how, how these powerful women actually used essential oils in their lives she also talks about Queen Elizabeth one and uh, Joan of Arc it's amazing that's the, the first chunk of the book and then the second part she focuses she starts with giving you um, she talks about essential oils, how they work, like scientifically how they work, and then she goes into like more practical things, blending and all of that. That's a really great book. Highly recommend you to get that one. And then the third book is called, uh, that's one I recommend for just really, really, really getting to like the nitty gritty everything about essential oils. This one is called uh, The Healing Intelligence of Essential Oils by Kurt Schnaubelt. And Kurt Schnaubelt is actually, uh, he owns uh, a company where I buy my oils from. I get my oils from a company that he owns. So he's written tons of books. This book is really great as a basic. And if you really are like a scientist, you want to know the science behind essential oils, this one is really fantastic for that and also practical. There are two sections, or I'm not sure, three sections, where you get all the basics, all the details, everything you want to know. Those three books are excellent, plus the magical aromatherapy book that I mentioned. Oh my gosh, I think this video is going to be really long, you guys. It's been half an hour already. Oh my gosh, I have so much more to say. I just started. Okay, so let's see. Okay, uh, let's go into the oils that I bought. My lips are really dry today. I think I need to put some oil on them. All right, so. My first oil is Magnolia Flower. Magnolia Flower is really, oh, I already told you that I have red champa, so this is white champa. And my computer keeps turning off. Okay. So white champa is, I'm gonna read you what it's for. Traditional, mental, physical, emotional benefits. I'm reading from the site where they sell this oil. Magnolia flower oil has been traditionally used to inspire feelings of beauty and love, calm the anxious mind, moisture the skin, inspire with its sweet, delicate scent, clear the sinuses and make breathing easier, relieve allergy symptoms, well, treat infections of the respiratory tract and gums. So as you can see, it's good for so many things, it's a variety of things. And it smells so amazing. It says here, blends well with okay so if you're interested in blending one way and I know uh, that was one of my questions that's coming up somebody asked me about this one way I like to learn uh, that I have learned about how to blend and which oils blend with which oils better is reading uh, from websites where they sell essential oils so many times they tell you what the oil blends well with and this is really useful to read, useful information, because even if you don't remember it all, it's still somewhere in your mind. And then you're also practicing, your mind is getting used to seeing all these um, names and all this uh, essential oil blends together. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a practice. It's not that easy to blend oils together for them to be effective and to smell nice. This is something that comes with practice, practice with your nose, practice with, you know, just the one, like I said last time, one oil, see how that oil sits on your skin, because everybody's skin is different, we all have different chemistries in our bodies, so smells different, smell differently on different people, so just, you know, 
experimenting and then reading in books, obviously. The Astrological Aromatherapy book is really great for that. It gives you like tables of what oils can be blended well together uh, to be used for perfumes for different signs, different astrological signs, and it actually touches on the whole birth chart. So, blends well with jasmine. This is the magnolia, right? That's what we're reading. Jasmine, lemon, lang lang, coriander, tuberose, grapefruit, and bergamot. When I first read that, I was thinking, uh, before smelling the flower, I was thinking, grapefruit, bergamot, that doesn't make sense. So, when I actually put it on though, first I smelled that the kind of fl flowery scent, and then for like the whole entire night, I felt like I was being followed around the house w by this huge grapefruit. <laughs> it was like grapefruit tracing me or ch chasing me around. So it does have this kind of like a fruity scent as well, but uh, the, uh, whereas the gardenia was more like a bubblegum strawberry, this is more like citrus. And that's the scent that lingers after the initial scent is worn off. So that's that. And then I got, I'll put that to the side, I got Melissa. This one is one milliliter in jojoba. I made a video on Melissa earlier last year. Uh, Melissa, which is lemon balm. Um, it's very, very potent, very, super strong. So I didn't even in the one milliliter diluted in a five milliliter, quite strong. And it's a really costly oil, actually. It was $85 for the five milliliters, so I didn't get that. I usually get this. And then I got Roman Chamomile, which I love so much. It's so relaxing. It's one of the most relaxing oils ever, 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 ever. And then I splurged and got another flower oil was kind of expensive but this is a very special one as you'll see in a minute and then I got a perfume it's called Lay Lady and it has a Hawaiian garland of tuberose jasmine carnation lang and golden champa flowers it smells so amazing you guys this is like I could literally smell it smell it out of the box it smells so amazing I love um, that little touch of the tuberose. Tuberose is so wonderful. I don't have that oil. It's kind of a luxury. And I realize I have splurged on the pleasures of the senses. I wonder if it's my... Mm, it might be my Jupiter in Taurus to blame. I have Jupiter in Taurus and whenever Jupiter sits in any sign it just exaggerates. Jupiter, Jupiter has a tendency of indul overindulging and in Taurus, the way I would delineate that for myself, overindulgence in the senses or overindulgence indulgence in the pleasures of the senses kind of goes overboard sometimes, so I gotta watch for that. So this perfume is amazing and I haven't even sprayed it on. I, even just touching it to my skin, I can smell it. It's so strong. It's amazing. And this was on sale, so I got it. Now... I'm gonna take a break for a minute because I've been talking too much. I'm gonna drink some water. So those two photos I just inserted were of my green moonstone that I wanted to show you guys. Now I want to answer a question from one of my lovely subscribers, Lori Edwards. Here she says, hi Maha, hi. I have only ever used all my essential oils for magical purposes, which doesn't always smell nice. This is true. Would you be able to explain which oils work well together and why? Thank you. Thank you, Lori. What a great question. I will answer it in this video very briefly. I could, however, make a whole video on it because it is something that I want to get into more detail and I would love to show you how I blend my oils because so many times I read things on, on online and I think, that's not really the best way to do it. So, uh, okay. What I will say, I did mention that the best thing is your nose, practice, over time you get better at it, and uh, reading online websites, stores, online shops where they sell essential oils can really be helpful because a lot of times they will list the oil and what it blends well with 
So reading those gives you a great idea of what oils you might be wanting to use in your future in the future. And you can uh, keep a separate journal maybe and write down oils that you've tried together that work well together. This is a really great idea. I don't do it though. I should. I don't do enough of that. If you could even take detailed notes like how many I used to do this, how many drops you've added and how many drops worked. And if you made any adjustments to any blends that you made, why? There is a, a standard rule when it comes to blending that uh, the oils have been divided to three categories or three scales of scent. You have the base note, the middle note, and the top note. So the base note is the more heavier scents uh, coming from resins or the uh, wood or the root part of the plant. Heavier scents that tend to linger on the longest. And a lot of times these ones are used for uh, as fixatives. Then you have the middle notes where um, the majority of plants fall into that category. Uh, flowers, some flowers are also base notes. For example, jasmine can be used as a base oil because it is a very heavy scent. Uh, but flower oils like lavender, for example, chamomile flowers and uh, leaves and stem part of the plant, they're generally put in the middle notes. And then the top note tends to be more citrus scents, ones that don't linger on very long, the ones that you initially smell or are initially notice and then kind of quickly wear off. So when you're blending, it helps to go with that system, that scale, and this is what perfumers use. Uh, that way you kind of have a balance between um, a little bit of a kick and a little bit of a heavier and kind of in between. You can certainly just stick to one category if you like. For example, you could do one that's only citrus notes, only uh, middle tone, so like uh, herbs that come from the same family, plants that come from the same family or same grouping. Um, a lot of times lavender, thyme, rosemary, those kind of things work really well together. And sometimes a touch of uh, chamomile would be nice too. You just have to play around, take notes, experiment, see what smells good, what smells you like personally, and read on, get ideas from websites, from some of the blends that they've created, and read in books. The Astrological Aromatherapy book is really great for blending um, astrologically and as a perfume. So she stays uh, in alignment with what smells nice and what it could be good for you uh, as a kind of a healing oil um, in response to your birth chart, your astrological signs, in the sun sign, moon sign, ascendant, all of that. So uh, read those books, or at least uh, check out other books and websites, and don't forget, your nose is your best teacher. So I hope that helps. Now I want to do a an unveiling of an, an oil that I haven't mentioned. It's a surprise for you and me. So this one is Osmanthus Absolute. Osmanthus, O-S-M-A-N-T-H-U-S. Osmanthus Fragrance. Osmanthus Absolute. Fragrance is Latin for absolute. Interesting. Okay, are you ready? I'm so thrilled because I've been actually waiting. I, I got this box of stuff a week ago. Oh my god. I can even smell it from here, you guys. I just I just literally like went like that and I can kind of smell it. Oh, I want to read you just briefly what it says about this oil on the website. If my internet allows me to. Okay, so we're going to take our time with this one. I want to tell you my initial reaction, but before that, I want to read it to see how close I am before I smell it. I can't wait. <laughs> so excited. Okay, so the flower itself is really cute. It's got these tiny little flowers, kind of yellowish, creamish, with five petals all together. Li uh, okay, so one of Mother Nature's most fantastically fragrant offerings. This rich, concentrated absolute extends a fragrance unlike anything else on earth. Wow. With heavenly top notes of honey, sweet fruit, and fantasia, and a fantasia of floral. Nice. It's from 
the country of origin is Eastern Asia. Scent description, as it says here, a blossom bouquet of peach, apricot, and pear that's been drenched in sweet, seductive honey. I liked that honey part. Blends well with jasmine, rose, champa, magnolia, great, vanilla, vetiver, Lang Lang, Lavender, Carnation, Gardenia, Tuberose, Bergamot, Lemon, and Blood Orange. Used to uplift spirit. Traditional uses has been to inspire happiness, lift depression, ease anxiety, calm the mind, increase collagen production. That's great for skin. And invoke amorous feelings. So this might be kind of an aphrodisiac, I would think. All right, are you ready? We're going to do this without music this time. So many things are coming to mind. I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of a woody flower. Wow. Kind of like cedar wood. I can see where the orange comes from. Okay, I'm going to put a drop, just one drop, because it's, it's a heavy, it's a heavy, it's not diluted. It's a heavy absolute. One drop. I have apricot kernel uh, as my carrier oil here. I love apricot kernel. It's, um, it's a really good base uh, carrier oil to use for this one. Uh, absolutes, by the way, are always dark in color. That's how you can tell if something is an absolute versus an essential oil. See how they have like, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a brownish color and it's not transparent. So I put one drop in my apricot kernel oil, which is really great for hormone balancing. It's really good for skin. And I love it. It's just really nice. It has a golden color, really beautiful oil. Wow. It's amazing. I love it. Of course I would love it. I knew I would love it. But let's see if I can smell the honey, the sweetness. I want to say it's really a woody scent, like a uh, maybe like an orange, cedar wood, honey, magnolia. It's beautiful anyway. It's beautiful, so gorgeous, and I can't believe I just got it. I wasn't. I was planning on getting this next year. I thought, Maha, you've been spending way too much money on oils. It's enough, but that's okay because I'm not going to be buying any oils until next year. Wish you guys were here to smell this beauty with me. But thank you so much for joining me all this time. I have to tell you guys something. I'm very, I'm distracted very easily. I have a Gemini ascendant and I have a lot of Mercury. Mercury is really strong in my chart. Mercury rules Gemini. And I'm very easily distracted. So if, when I'm filming, even if a tiny sound comes, like if my parrot starts screaming for some reason, I just forget everything all of a sudden and I'm, I'm talking to you, but then I'm thinking, ah, I'm distracted. So I can't believe I survived that 40 minute video. I usually don't make very long videos be just because of that, because I get distracted really easily. So thank you again for joining me on this beautiful journey of smelling flowers. And I'm sending you lots and lots of love as always. Take care, be well, and I'll see you in my next videos. Bye.